Hi Paper Crafters! Welcome to another Design with Joe video. I'm Joanne Rogers, a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Central Alberta, Canada, and I've been designing with you in mind since 1999. I want to share with you a little bit about the differences between the different types of dies that we have. And you may notice that there's on the back of the uh, little plastic cases that your dies come in, and this one says framelits, and this one says thinlets, and this one also says framelits. So what is the difference? So a framelit basically is a shape that will go around a stamped image. And it doesn't have to only go around a stamped image. It could be creating a mat that goes around the framelit that is the stamped image. And that's exactly what I have on this card here. So this here is a framelit going around this stamped image. However, when you get to the thinlets, it's almost a bit confusing because that looks like a shape as well, and you would be right. So these are two framelits. The rest of these are all thinlets. So thinlets are shapes that will stand on their own that generally add or create elements to your piece that don't necessarily have a stamped image. So in here, you, there would be no stamped images for any of those. You're just going to cut out paper in that shape. And when you do that, you use them in a background or even the focal point of your card. I'm going to pull in the catalog because Stampin' Up! has done a really great job in this catalog of helping us understand this a little bit more. So um, this is page 215 of the annual catalog. It's the 2018 annual catalog. And one of the great things about this is that they've color coded the framelits, which they're calling standard dies, and the detailed dies, which we are going to call thinlets for today's video. And gray, anything that's in gray, what they're saying is that those are standard dies and you would use them with this particular sandwich. So this guy here, the animal, fr animal friends, most of these are shapes that are going to be cutting out images, either stamped images or they could be images on our designer series paper as well. Even though there's some that are going to cut out a little bit more detailed, the majority of the items in there are framelits. But Stamp It Up makes a determination about what is the best descriptor, and in this case they've called this the Animal Friends Thinlets. For this particular one, Apron Builder, they've called it framelits because most of the items in here are framelits. If I skip over the page, I'm going to go a couple pages here, and I'm going to go to the Springtime Impressions. These are all thinlets, meaning that they are all detailed ones. So even though the dies are all made out of the same material, they're all very thin, wafer thin. They have a cutting um, blade of some kind, and you can run your fingers over top of them and you won't get cut, but it is uh, a blade that's strong enough to cut into our paper. And it's recommended that you only cut one piece of paper at a time, but they're all wafer thin. And um, we're going to use a different type of cutting uh, sandwich for our thinlets versus our framelits. So let's get on to doing that so I can give you some hints. So on this card we are going to use framelits here, framelits here, we're going to use thinlets here and I'm also on the card I'm going to make for you we're going to uh, put in a, a framelit in behind one of these uh, pine cones. So what are we going to need? For this card we are going to need the second largest framelit circle we are going to need the three different pine boughs and we are going to need, uh, we'll take the larger of the pine cones and we're going to take two of the thinlet pine cones and then we're going to need the largest stitched shapes. So we have a good combination here of framelits and thinlets. So we're going to start with the thinlets. I'm going to take those framelits and just move them aside and I'm going to pull in my um, my sandwich maker, shall we call it. So I've got my uh, Big Shot platform. I'll turn that around so you can read it. So this is the Big Shot platform. We're going to use a thin die adapter because these are all thin dies. And we're going to use a precision base plate and it is really a sturdy core of steel. 
And the whole point to this is that when you run it through your Big Shot, it's not going to have any give. Because when you have give on some of these guys, because they're so intricate, they sometimes don't cut through the paper. And you may find that at home if you are getting frustrated cutting some of these really intricate dies and not all of the cuts are going through. It could be that you need to have a precision base plate, which really is a great way to make it uh, a better uh, cutting experience for you. So we're going to use some early espresso and just a scrap of our shaded spruce. Now just a hint as well, when you are using longer and thinner dies like this, it's not recommended that you run them through in that direction. It's recommended that you turn them and they run through this way so that they are going to get the best pressure from that that cylinder that's in your big shot. So I'm going to put all of my um, dies on there, all of my pine boughs going all in that direction. And then I'm also going to put my um, pine cones on there. And then it's just one of your standard cutting mats. So I've got those cut out and you'll see that some of these jumped out of their place and that's okay. Um, I'm also going to pull in my uh, my die brush and I put mine just in a little box. This I think it was from Golf Goals. And um, what you do now to make it a little bit easier for yourself, and you might want to pull out your pokey tool or your paper piercing tool, is you are going to take your pieces, and these ones, because they're so intricate, they have stuck down. I leave my metal on there, so my die on there, and then I run my die brush over top. And hopefully what's going to happen is just what happened there, and the, the die is just going to pop right out, or the paper is going to pop right out. Sometimes it may not. So here it is a little bit looser and then I can just sort of thread that out. It, this particular one is almost like a fish bone. You can pull that out of there. This guy here too. What I don't generally like to do quite as much is run this right over top of the paper. What I find could happen there is that I might be more apt to uh, rip my paper a little bit. So you can also do this and pull them out. Whatever is easier. This one's stuck in there pretty good. I could take my pokey tool and try and I'm going to pull that out. I'm going to do the same thing with that guy in just a minute. This should just pop out now and it does. And if there were any of the items left in there, any of those little triangles, I would take my paper piercer tool. And this is what I don't like about when I do that roll that is that that's now created a curved shape and I like them to lie flat. So that's why I like them as much as possible to stay with the metal. So I'm taking my paper piercer, I'm just going to punch those out. So those are my thinlets that I've, um, my detailed thinlets that I've cut out. And I'm just going to push those off to the side for a moment. When we're cutting our um, framelits, we want to use uh, our magnetic platform. You don't need to have that um, detailed precision base plate. And in actual fact, you don't want to use it because it will put a little bit too much stress on dies, especially ones that are as large as these. And you may end up with uh, dies that are a little bit warped. And maybe you have some of those at home. If you do, just make sure that you don't use your precision base plate. Unfortunately, once these get bent, they are uh, probably bent for good. They're hard to get back to their nice flat stage. So our magnetic platform, we just need that. We need two of our standard cutting mats. So I'm gonna pull another one in here. We need our paper. So I have some of my um, white paper here. I'm going to put my acorn on the light color there. Let me see if I can actually get them all in on one piece. It looks like I can. So I'm going to, my larger one is going to be the stitched framelit. So that's just going to go down. My white is going to go on here. Now lots of times I will actually stamp my images first and then I will cut them out. It makes it easier for me if I can line things up. But just for the purposes of today I want to just cut them all at one time. So I'm going to put that on. Now one of the things you notice probably as, as I was putting that on is this guy wants to move around. The magnetic poles in the magnetic plate sometimes make it move. So you either have to move your paper until it stops doing that or you can take a little piece of washi tape and stick that on top and then we're going to put that on top and we're going to run that through our big shot I'll be right back okay so this time they're generally not going to stick 
you're not going to need your um, your dye brush because these will just pop out. So if they stick, and they do on these, um, these stitched framelits, just sort of poke them out gently and they will come out. And then this guy here as well. That's all the framelit and thinlet die cutting that we need to do. So now we'll start stamping and we will finish off the rest of the card. We're using the Christmas Pine set, which is was a set new in the holiday catalog in 2017, and it is one of my favorite sets. I love all the sayings it has. This is at 60%, so they're not as large as they are in actual fact. So we're going to start with the tidings, and because I wanted to have two different colors on here, I'm using my Stampin' Rate marker. And you want to use the brush tip end, and you want to use the brush tip on the side. So I've done all of my words, so when I say on the side, I'm going to go right over top of my stamp on the side, as opposed to going on the tip, which is going to damage the tip of the marker. So go ahead and just ink up all of that. So now I'm going to go in with my old olive and I'm going to go over the parts that I skipped that I want to draw attention to. And you can see that I've left that just a little bit too long to dry, but I don't mind that really. I sort of like the, um, the coming and going. But if you don't, you can go in with the other tip of your marker and very carefully just fill in some of that color. I'm not going to do that because I like it the way it is. So I'll go ahead and stamp the inside now. So the inside I'm going to decorate. I'm going to use... Uh, Different colors, I'm going to go, well not different colors from the paper, I'm going to go with my real red, I'm going to go with my old olive, and I'm going to go with my shaded spruce. First thing I'm going to do is stamp my words on the inside, so may you, uh, may the simple joys of the season be yours. I'm going to try and get that nicely centered without putting my head in this shot. Okay, and now I'm going to, because I've got a larger stamp, I'm going to take my stamp pad to it work it upside down and I'm just going to put a little bit of old olive and I'm going to do that up here as well upside down a little bit here and now I'm going to clean this off I'm just going to go on my paper right now and clean it off I should be using my um, cleaner I just don't have that open right now and I'm going to go now with some shaded spruce and I'm going to put that in there as well. So I'm going to overlap them a little bit so that they're not right on top of one another. Ink that piece up again. And go just for a little variety there. Okay, so now I've got my shaded spruce and my old olive. Sorry, I was turning it around, but you don't need it turned around. And now I'm going to go for my early espresso for my pine cones. And I'm just going to stamp those, one there, and then a smaller one here. Okay, so you have different details going on. Okay, so I'm done now with all the stamping as well. So here's everything we need now to put our card together. So as I was working with this one, I stuck my finger on there. So we are going to cover that up with something. Uh, no need to worry about that. So I'm going to glue that down on top of my um, early espresso, just using snail. So on, sorry, I should tell you the measurements here. So this uh, early espresso is five and a quarter by four, and my whisper white is three and three quarters by five. My piece of crumb cake is five and a half by eight and a half, and it's scored at two and an eighth and six and three eighths. So I'm folding that into the middle. And I'm going to crisp that up with my bone folder and then I'm going to fold this side over to meet it and I'm going to try and line up that middle. This is our designer series paper and it's called Under the Mistletoe and this is the, the really nice um, forest kind of scene uh, with that one and it has all kinds of colors in there. So there's shaded spruce and there is um, Old olive, some early espresso, some real red. So my early espresso piece is again 
four by five and a quarter, and my designer series paper is three and three quarters by five. Now I'm going to put that down on the front, and I'm going to use this as my top, and I'm going to put my snail on this part only. I'm not going to put it on here because there's a tendency for us to put snail too far, and we don't want to, so I want it to be on the flap. I know it's going to be a fairly large piece, so I'm going to put all across the top. Doesn't matter, but if there's one way that speaks to you a little bit more than the other, I think I like this way, then I'm going to center that right over top. And now I have no glue that's uh, showing from the back. Okay, I'm going to glue this guy into the middle. And our tidings of comfort and joy is going to go on there as well. And you're going to be able to see your stitched lines underneath there. Now here is where I use some of my liquid glue. So I pull in liquid glue and I want my uh, pieces to come off the side here. So I'm going to put liquid glue on this part here. I'm going to put down my pine boughs first and I only want my pine boughs to stick a little bit out the edge. So I'm going to put those down like this. And you can decide if you want two or if you want three. I sort of like the look of three. I'm going to put a little bit more glue on there. So I'll leave that off. This one, I don't need all of it, so I'm just going to take that part, put that on top. And now I'm going to put on my pine cones. So I'm going to put this guy down first. And then I'm going to put my crumb cake right over top. I think I'm going to put my, uh, just a little bit more glue on there. And I haven't tried this one before now, so it'll be interesting to see what that looks like. Let that set up pretty good. And I'm going to take a look at it. Whoops. Maybe it didn't set up quite long enough. But I'm going to put it in the back just because it's easier right now. So I am going to let that dry for just a little bit. While it's drying upside down, I can put my dimensionals on, however. The last thing I'm going to do is put on a few of our metallic pearls, and these are the gold ones. So I just pick them up with my paper piercing tool, and I'm going to place them right on those little designs. And I'm going to put two here, I think, and one over here. And now I have to figure out how I'm going to cover that guy up. And I think I'll do the same thing. Maybe I'll put a little cluster of pearls up there. And it, I wouldn't have done this, but it does actually tie the card together if I've got pearls here. Yeah, maybe I'll put that up there. Okay, so um, there's your card. All of the supplies I use today are listed in the description. If you would like to pick something up and you live in Canada and you do not currently have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to be your gal. I hope you got some tips on the differences between framelits and thinlets and for uh, different ways that you can use to cut them. And if you do like the project, please consider liking it below and also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. I also have a blog at www.designwithjoe.ca. I post regularly and I would love to have you join in. Thanks very much for joining me and have a super paper crafting day.